Okay guys, here's a real quick video, well as quick as I can make it, uh, on replacing the heater core in a 2004 Wrangler. You can see there's a lot of stuff left in the dash. Well that's because, unlike what other people say, none of the stuff that's still in there needs to come out. I'm going to show you why here shortly. So, first thing you want to do is come across the top and you got this strip that is basically this right here. You want to pull it out. You want to pull the trim around your cluster, the trim that goes around the bottom of your steering column, and the trim that goes around your radio, and pull out your glove box. As far as trim pieces, that's all you want to come out. I've actually already installed the console, um, but this section right here needs to come out. It's the only part that needs to come out. So you got to pull your cup holder out and your shifter boot if it's an automatic, and there's a bolt under here, and there's a bolt right here. There might be another one somewhere, but somebody's been into this thing, so it's a little bit loose already. I think there's one more up there that's supposed to be in, but... Yeah, I'm not real sure. All right, so you got all your trim off, all right? You have to take the bezel, which is right there from around your steering column. You know, as I said, this had been messed with before. It's only got two Phillips screws. They go in right there. This is the top piece. Uh, right here is the bottom piece. You know, you got... A screw right there and a screw right there and they're Phillips at least on this one you pull them out then that gives you access to get all the stuff from your airbag loose now and your steering column now I had already unhooked the battery and it's still unhooked which you'll see when I show you where the bolts are for the box um, here is the two clips that are for the clock spring. They are in the column like this. So you'll need to reach up above with a pick to pull the yellow one out. Down below, there's a little clip that you need to pull down to pull this one out. The rest of them, you know, they've got the normal bullcrap Chrysler red clips that you'll need to take out and to replace them. All right, once you've got that done, with your steering wheel centered, there is a bolt you can see right here and right there. Okay, you undo that bolt first. Then you take these bolts out. Okay, and then these bolts out. And your steering column will pull right out. Now, I took tape and wrapped around the column and the steering wheel to keep everything from moving so that the clock spring didn't get broke. All right. So, you got that side unhooked. Now, you go around to the other side of the vehicle. Into your glove box area. Here is the connection for your antenna. Here's the connection for your heater box that you want to take loose. And then here are your vacuum lines that you'll want to take loose. All right. You take that stuff. Up in there, you've got these hoses on both sides. You can kind of unhook them from right here. And if you reach around on the other side, you can, as you can see, you can kind of unhook them and then take them out of these little clips and it makes life easier as well don't unhook them from the, the dashboard you don't need to also you don't need to take these stupid things off either not necessary all right now you can see right here two bolts the bolt the bottom of the airbag assembly in to the dashboard as well as to the firewall you take those two bolts out. Those are big. Those are like 15s. They're different than everything else on this because why be uniform? 
All right, you got that loose, and you got your three Torx bits that go down the side on each side. You can take them loose. All right, then across through here, I'm trying to get it up in there. Hey, a Jeep with rust, who would have ever thought? There's one there, one there, one there, one there. I believe those are tens. You take those out, okay? And once you've done that, this dashboard is loose. It's completely loose. Very easy to get out. However, what you want to do, hopefully you've got somebody to help you, and you have them hold it out like this, because back in here, you have this clip right here, which was actually up in that area and we pulled it loose because we needed to get to it then right back in here is another one this one as you can see they've got those little sliding clips you just have to slide them it forces the plug to disconnect same way with that one right there then you've got one more right here there Okay, I think that was it. Yeah. No, that one doesn't need us. Those two. Yeah, those two plugs. Take those loose. Ah. Yeah, all right, you really wanted to see my ugly face. All right, then your dashboard is loose. You get someone on that side, they can grab this handle. And you can kind of grab this one here and here. And you can pick that up, and this whole assembly will lift right out. And set it somewhere where it won't get broke. Then, on your heater core. That's one of the reasons why you have to take this off. We were able to get this off, this, this off, with this in place, but the heater box will not come out. Alright, so then, we've got... All that out of your way. All that's left is your lovely heater box sitting there. You've got a screw right here that holds this in. You got to take it out. Then there's two screws that hold that fuse panel in. Now, as you can see, my wiring harness is around the front of this. That's because I forgot to shove this wire around before I installed the heater box. It's got enough room so you're not dead in the water if you don't, but you'll need to secure it so the wire don't poke on this. Um, basically, take that screw loose right there, okay? Come out to your firewall. Then, you're going to have some 11 millimeter bolts. This one's got a K&M racing intake put on it. Uh-huh. And then you've got two bolts right there. They're both 11 millimeters. You've got one down in here. Trying to get it in there to see it. There, right there, as you can see. There it is. Got it. All right, as you can see, mine wasn't taken off. That's because I didn't know it was there. And it pulled out of the box anyway. Once it pulled out of the box, I figured four works just as good as five. All right, then if you come over to here, you have one right here. And then on this one down here, you're going to actually have two nuts. And I'm going to show you why. You're going to have this fine piece of plastic stuck in behind there that was for the original air box that probably nobody's ever taken out it's got an 11 millimeter nut on the front of it i think it sits in there more like this i'm not sure anyway one on the outside and then there's one on the back that actually holds a box in you got to take both of those nuts out all right once you do that and you've unhooked your heater core hoses and your vacuum line here that box is going to pretty much pull right out except or this little metal bracket that this bolts to 
does not clear very well. You can probably mess around with it. But what I did was I just took a pair of vice grips. I bent it up out of the way. Made sure I didn't tear my foam up for my fresh air intake. And then remove the air box. Once you remove the air box. And this is, uh, let's see here. This is the top of it, so it's a little easier to see. Alright. You'll have... Let's see, where's that other piece at? Here it is. Like I said, I had to build two boxes, so I have extra pieces to show you. Alright. You'll want to take... This off. And it sits on there right like that. There's... One, two, three, four, five screws that hold this unit onto your heater box. You take it off. Then you've got a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, and one right here. Then here, 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 down in here, because there's a cover that's on that. I took it off of this box, but you didn't need to. Right here. Okay. Then around on this side, you got one here. Right there. Then one right there. There's one there. One there. One there. I think that's all of them. You take those off. There's two little tiny metal clips, which... Ah, here they are. Ah, uh, of course you can, there you go. Those have to come off too, because they hold the box together, I guess, for some kind of special assembly, uh, just to make it easier. I was able to save my foam that goes around the heater box and reapply it. Uh, if you go real slow, you can, but if you get in too big of a hurry, it's going to tear the foam up. And also around uh, this section here, where it comes apart... If you cut this apart right here, that'll that'll help too. So, like I say, right here's where your heater core comes out. And if it's an AC unit, it comes out here. Um, if you're real gentle, you can kind of peel that foam back. And it'll give you enough to reuse it. You don't have to find something to make do. Uh, as far as putting it back together, if you can get it apart, you can put it back together. It's a little bit of a long video, but man, this is a long process. I've been about a day on it, and I'm still waiting on parts, so I'm using the time to make this video because I'm waiting on a blower motor, blower motor resistor, and the motor for the blend door because customer was supposed to have provided everything, and they bought the wrong stuff. But, oh well. So, hope this helps you guys, and keep on working on your own crap.